Okay, so now we'll start by creating the game over logic in this in this session. So a few things that we need to do. So we need to be able to to know um, how many steps the player has made. So we need to create a variable that tracks how many jumps uh, have have been made, how many steps, uh, either one step or two step, and then all the way up to fifty. Then we also need to know if the player has jumped on a block or on an empty space. If the player jumps on an empty space, of course the game is supposed to be over. But if they if they if they jump on a block, then um, of course the game can can proceed, right? So this is pretty much what we shall do in this session. So we'll start off by going to the player controller. So here's our player controller. So amongst the things we'll create in here is we'll create a move index. So this is going to be to track the number of steps. Okay, so that's the point of this one. So create private current move index. Okay, so this will be initially set to 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 zero. Then um, we had the the jump by step function. So remember, this function is the one that actually does the jumping, right? So every time someone jumps, we need to add. Okay, we need to add to um, to the to the number of steps. So since we've started it off at zero, we can say this dot current move index. Okay, then we'll say plus equals step. So this adds one or two to the current number of steps. Right, so that's the idea. So since this function is the one that's handling the steps, it handles either a one or a two, depending on whether you clicked the left or the right mouse button, it does either one or two. So whatever you clicked, that number will be added to, to the current move index. Then after that is done, outside of the function, we can create an on once jump end. Okay. So the moment the character is done jumping, right? So we want to create a custom event. So now Cocos has, um, of course, the the input event listeners that are based on touch. Uh, that are based on keyboards or mouse input and so on. Uh, but in this case, we want to create a custom event. So to do this, we can say this dot node dot emit. So this uh, is a function, um, the emit function that can be used to create a custom event, um, and then this event can be running, um, and, and and every time it runs, we can pass some some data. So in this case, the, the name of the event is jump end. So jump end. And then what are we passing? We are passing the move index, the current move index. Okay. So, so this registers a custom event. Right then, when this is done, um, we can go to the game manager and then make some changes in there as well. Okay, so we can we can go to the game manager. Then just down here where we've got quite a number of functions, I'll create a function that does some some checks. So we'll call it check result as is the case in the documentation. 
then inside here we'll get the move index okay of course it's going to be getting the same current move index from the from the player controller so this this move index is a number right so it contains the number of steps that the the person has made that the player has has made right so we need to put logic to to know if the game is over or not so the first thing that we do is we we'll just check if the player is within the 50 steps right remember the game is working based off of 50 steps so it creates 50 spaces for the for the player to to move so the move index should always be less than 50 if it's more than 50 then the game is over right it means they've gone beyond the road the road goes up to 50 right and so we should be below 50 so if the move index is less than the size of the road so this dot road length so if the if the move index right so it's like saying if the player position is not at the end is not beyond the end of the road that's another way we, in which we can say that so if the player is if the player's position is not beyond the end of the road right so that's when we can we can check if the player has stepped on an empty space or not but even before we do that assuming that the player has gone off of the road so we can then write what should happen in this case this is the else player is beyond the road okay so if the player has gone beyond the road so they've jumped through all the 50 steps and then they're now on 51 52 they're, they're, they've gone beyond 50 so we need we need the game to stop right so it means we've gone beyond the maximum size of the road so we shall change the state back to initialization um, so we shall change to game state dot dot init so we, we so we stop the game we, we we disable the player input and we also bring back the start menu then if the if the player is within that 50 steps right so inside here we can then check check if the player is not on on a road right so in that in this case we can check because we know we know the 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 roads and the empty spaces right so we can check we can say this road then move index okay so of course the move index is um is the one that's um uh, the current position of the player right and then we've got the 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 road itself right so this one was being filled in um where was this let me just um scroll down here so yes so this this is pretty much an array so the road array we were adding okay either bt stone or or bt none right so bt stone or bt none so stone meaning a, there's a road placement or none if there's nothing right so that's so that's that's the idea so based off of that we can then check yes, so we can check if the position currently has a road or it's got nothing so we can check if road block type dot bt none so if the current position has none then it means the the player has jumped on an empty spot right so if the player has jumped on an empty spot then they're falling so the game is over so it switch 
the state as well to to init game state dot gs init okay so i hope this logic makes sense we check the, the, the we check so um the move index will be supplied by by the node as it ends the jump then we'll be checking at at the end of each jump we've not yet written the code for that but we've we've written the event listener but we've not yet finished it so we, we write to check the result so it, it gives us the current position of the player and then if the current position of the player is less than 50 then they are within the 50 uh, places that the road can go to and then we check um, within that road so the road position has either 0 or 1 0 or 1 0 or 1 where 0 is bt none and 1 is bt stone bt none means an empty space bt stone means the the stone um, or the road is available so this road array was created some time back right in the earlier tutorials so we already have this so all the 50 spots we know what's there is it a road or an empty space so all we do is check if let's say position one it does position one have a stone or not position two does position two have a stone or not now whenever we come across a position that has got nothing then it means the game has ended meaning the player has um has has jumped on an empty space so that's the idea then um we can we can go ahead um in the start okay so in the start we need we need to add some additional things so we'll check this to player controller so question mark assuming it's assuming it's true okay on then we'll be looking for the jump end so it has to be written exactly the way it was defined um, when we are setting it up in the emit so um, where was that at the end of at the end of the jump so this one here so it has to be written exactly uh, to the correct case sense sensitivity capital J capital E so capital J capital E then this dot on player jump end so this is the function that will be running when the event is um, is dispatched right so this function doesn't yet exist okay but what we do say is the moment we have a jump end uh, event um, the moment we, we we notice that that has been emitted we then have to run the on player jump end function then this function is small okay so the function is is um is small so it gets the move index okay number let's see what's the spelling problem here player jump end okay then they need too much okay then um so the moment that happens so we will be running the check result and then we'll be passing the move index so in short the moment the on player jump end function runs then we'll be running the on the on uh, i mean the moment the the jump end event um, 
uh, gets dispatched, the moment we notice that um, the, the jump has come to an end, then we'll run this function. And then this function will be supplying the move index. Okay. And then I uh, will be sending it to the to the check result. Okay. Then check result is then going to be able to know whether uh, the player has stepped on an empty space or not. Okay. Then um, we're not yet done. Okay. So. Um, okay so that's that's where we are so then in the player controller script so we need to do one more thing so um the current problem that will exist is when the when when the game is over the the movement index will carry the values from the previous game session so we need to reset that value uh, back to zero so for this we create a simple function that just resets the value to zero so this one will be setting the current move index back to zero okay so what's the point of this so when the game is over we need to make sure that the player um, the player's uh, position in terms of um, um, how we're tracking its position the player's position should be reset back to to zero so they are on on they've not yet made any steps right so we need to make sure that let's say the game was played and um, the player had jumped all the way to block number 34 when the game comes to an end this value might still keep the value of 34 so when the the game comes to an end we need to make sure that the the move index is set back to zero right so that uh, we start tracking the movement afresh okay then um let's see where did we create the init function Okay, it should be in the game manager. Okay, so one of the things we'll add at the bottom of the init, because the init runs the moment the game is starting or when the game comes to an end. So what we what we shall do is in there we we'll call, call the player controller. So this dot player controller dot reset. Okay, this dot player controller dot reset. And then uh, we'll just run the function. Okay, we 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 should actually, in fact, for safety, we will actually put this inside here. Okay, so if the player controller is true, then we we'll, we we'll, we'll reset we we'll reset the value of move index back to back to zero. Okay. Okay, so for now this is all that we need to to, to be able to, to do okay so now if we try running it so preview it in the simulator so when we try running it um, so it should it should it should uh, stop it should send us to the start menu when when we jump on a blank space Okay, so let's first of all try that. Okay, actually it's not yet doing that. I think there's one thing that we've forgotten to do. So let me just check through the code. So the player on jump once. Yes, okay, so this one here. So the, the on once jump end function. I don't think this is written in the documentation, but um, this function is supposed to run after the jump ends. 
and earlier on in the tutorial we had written this section here so in this if statement if the jump has come to an end um, we should then run that function so we, we, we put this there this dot on once jump end so run the on once jump end function in the update function under the if statement where the the jump comes to an end so this is pretty much what is left i think that's the only thing that's missing let me run that again Okay, still, still not registering. Let me check again. Let's see this one. Jump once. And okay, did we have everything saved here? Just save everything. okay i think that's really the only thing that that's missing so just make sure that all of the sections are saved and then so if it's saved and you've made sure that this dot on once jump end is written um so here should just wait for it to reload like that so that it loads the new file okay so then we'll try it one more time so don't run the don't run the the the, the game without seeing that it's loaded the new version of the of the typescript at the bottom here okay so let's see okay so that's working now so when we jump okay so it should be bringing the the start menu because it should change from from the playing state to the initialization state okay i think um yeah just make sure so when you make a change in a document let's say we make a change here like this so i've just entered an additional space and saved it so before running it make sure that this side it loads like that you, when you see player controller.ts show up this side then it means it's integrated the the most recent changes then you can run it if you run it quickly like i did uh you won't see the the difference because it will still be running the old code so that's why i'll end for the for this one i think we'll we'll we'll, we'll add the scores in the next tutorial and then we'll, we'll try and polish polish up a few things and then we'll end this series so like the video leave a comment thanks for for watching